Organization of African Unity Convention on the Prevention and Combating of Terrorism, adopted at Algiers on July 14, 1999, in force on December 6, 2002, United Nations, Treaty Series, Volume 2219, Number 39464, Depository, Secretary General of the Organization of African Unity. The Member States of the Organization of African Unity Considering the purposes and principles enshrined in the Charter of the Organization of African Unity, in particular its clauses relating to the security, stability, development of friendly relations and cooperation among its Member States. Recalling the provisions of the Declaration on the Code of Conduct for Inter-African Relations, adopted by the 30th Ordinary Session of the Assembly of Heads of State and Government of the Organization of African Unity, held in Tunis, Tunisia, from 13 to June 15, 1994. Aware of the need to promote human and moral values based on tolerance and rejection of all forms of terrorism irrespective of their motivations. Believing in the principles of international law, the provisions of the charters of the Organization of African Unity and of the United Nations and the latter's relevant resolutions on measures aimed at combating international terrorism and, in particular, Resolution 4960 of the General Assembly of December 9, 1994, together with the Annex Declaration on Measures to Eliminate International Terrorism as well as Resolution 51-210 of the General Assembly of December 17, 1996 and the Declaration to Supplement the 1994 Declaration on Measures to Eliminate International Terrorism. Annex thereto. Deeply concerned over the scope and seriousness of the phenomenon of terrorism and the dangers it poses to the stability and security of states. Desirous of strengthening cooperation among member states in order to forestall and combat terrorism. Reaffirming the legitimate right of peoples for self-determination and independence pursuant to the principles of international law and the provisions of the charters of the Organization of African Unity and the United Nations as well as the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. Concerned that the lives of innocent women and children are most adversely affected by terrorism. Convinced that terrorism constitutes a serious violation of human rights and, in particular, the rights to physical integrity, life, freedom and security, and impedes socio-economic development through destabilization of states. Convinced further that terrorism cannot be justified under any circumstances and, consequently, should be combated in all its forms and manifestations, including those in which states are involved directly or indirectly, without regard to its origin, causes and objectives. Aware of the growing links between terrorism and organized crime, including the illicit traffic of arms, drugs and money laundering. Determined to eliminate terrorism in all its forms and manifestations. Have agreed as follows. Part 1. Scope of Application. Article 1. For the purposes of this convention. 1. Convention means the OA Convention on the Prevention and Combating of Terrorism. 2. State party means any member state of the Organization of African Unity which has ratified or acceded to this convention and has deposited its instrument of ratification or accession with the Secretary General of the Organization of African Unity. 3. Terrorist Act means a. Any act which is a violation of the criminal laws of a state party and which may endanger the life, physical integrity or freedom of or cause serious injury or death to any person, any number or group of persons or causes or may cause damage to public or private property, natural resources, environmental or cultural heritage and is calculated or intended to I. Intimidate, put in fear, force, coerce or induce any government, body, institution, the general public or any segment thereof, to do or abstain from doing any act or to adopt or abandon a particular standpoint, or to act according to certain principles or to disrupt any public service, the delivery of any essential service to the public or to create a public emergency or 3. Create general insurrection in a state. 
b. Any promotion, sponsoring, contribution to, command, aid, incitement, encouragement, attempt, threat, conspiracy, organizing, or a procurement of any person with the intent to commit any act referred to in paragraph A, I, 2, 3. Article 2. States parties undertake to A. Review their national laws and establish criminal offenses for terrorist acts as defined in this convention and make such acts punishable by appropriate penalties that take into account the grave nature of such offenses. B. Consider, as a matter of priority, the signing or ratification of, or accession to, the international instruments listed in the annexure, which they have not yet signed, ratified or acceded to and c. Implement the actions, including enactment of legislation and the establishment as criminal offenses of certain acts as required in terms of the international instruments referred to in paragraph b and that states have ratified and acceded to and make such acts punishable by appropriate penalties which take into account the grave nature of those offenses. d. Notify the Secretary General of the OA of all the legislative measures it has taken and the penalties imposed on terrorist acts within one year of its ratification of, or accession to. The Convention Article 3, 1 Notwithstanding the provisions of Article 1, the struggle waged by peoples in accordance with the principles of international law for their liberation or self-determination, including armed struggle against colonialism, occupation, aggression and domination by foreign forces shall not be considered as terrorist acts. 2. Political, philosophical, ideological, racial, ethnic, religious or other motives shall not be a justifiable defense against the terrorist act. Part 2. Areas of Cooperation, Article 4, 1. States parties undertake to refrain from any acts aimed at organizing, supporting, financing, committing or inciting to commit terrorist acts, or providing havens for terrorists, directly or indirectly including the provision of weapons and their stockpiling in their countries and the issuing of visas and travel documents. 2. States parties shall adopt any legitimate measures aimed at preventing and combating terrorist acts in accordance with the provisions of this convention and their respective national legislation, in particular, they shall do the following. a. Prevent their territories from being used as a base for the planning organization or execution of terrorist acts or for the participation or collaboration in these acts in any form whatsoever. b. Develop and strengthen methods of monitoring and detecting plans or activities aimed at the illegal cross-border transportation, importation, export, stockpiling and use of arms, ammunition and explosives and other materials and means of committing terrorist acts. C. Develop and strengthen methods of controlling and monitoring land, sea and air borders and customs and immigration checkpoints in order to preempt any infiltration by individuals or groups involved in the planning, organization and execution of terrorist acts. D. Strengthen the protection and security of persons, diplomatic and consular missions, premises of regional and international organizations accredited to a state party in accordance with the relevant conventions and rules of international law. e. Promote the exchange of information and expertise on terrorist tax and establish databases for the collection and analysis of information and data on terrorist elements, groups, movements and organizations. f. Take all necessary measures to prevent the establishment of terrorist support networks in any form whatsoever. g. Ascertain when granting asylum, that the asylum seeker is not involved in any terrorist act. h. Arrest the perpetrators of terrorist acts and try them in accordance with national legislation, or extradite them in accordance with the provisions of this convention or extradition treaties concluded between the requesting state and the requested state and, in the absence of a treaty, Consider facilitating the extradition of persons suspected of having committed terrorist acts and, i, 
establish effective cooperation between relevant domestic security officials and services and the citizens of the state's parties in a bid to enhance public awareness of the scourge of terrorist acts and the need to combat such acts, by providing guarantees and incentives that will encourage the population to give information on terrorist acts or other acts which may help to uncover such acts and arrest their perpetrators. Article 5 States' parties shall cooperate among themselves in preventing and combating terrorist acts in conformity with national legislation and procedures of each state in the following areas. 1. States' parties undertake to strengthen the exchange of information among them regarding a. Acts and crimes committed by terrorist groups, their leaders and elements, their headquarters and training camps, their means and sources of funding and acquisition of arms the types of arms, ammunition and explosives used, and other means in their possession. b. The communication and propaganda methods and techniques used by the terrorist groups, the behavior of these groups, the movement of their leaders and elements, as well as their travel documents. 2. States parties undertake to exchange any information that leads to a. The arrest of any person charged with a terrorist act against the interests of a state party or against its nationals, or attempted to commit such an act or participated in it as an accomplice or an instigator. b. The seizure and confiscation of any type of arms, ammunition, explosives, devices or funds or other instrumentalities of crime used to commit a terrorist act or intended for that purpose. 3. States' parties undertake to respect the confidentiality of the information exchanged among them and not to provide such information to another state that is not party to this convention, or to a third state party, without the prior consent of this state from where such information originated. 4. States' parties undertake to promote cooperation among themselves and to help each other with regard to procedures relating to the investigation and arrest of persons suspected of, charged with or convicted of terrorist acts, in conformity with the national law of each state. 5. States' parties shall cooperate among themselves in conducting and exchanging studies and researches on how to combat terrorist acts and to exchange expertise relating to control of terrorist acts. 6. States' parties shall cooperate among themselves, where possible, in providing any available technical assistance in drawing up programs or organizing, where necessary and for the benefit of their personnel. Joint training courses involving one or several states' parties in the area of control of terrorist acts, in order to improve their scientific, technical and operational capacities to prevent and combat such acts. Part 3. State Jurisdiction. Article 6. 1. Each state party has jurisdiction over terrorist acts as defined in Article 1 when a. The act is committed in the territory of that state and the perpetrator of the act is arrested in its territory or outside it if this is punishable by its national law. b. The act is committed on board a vessel or a ship flying the flag of that state or an aircraft which is registered under the laws of that state at the time the offense is committed or c. The act is committed by a national or a group of nationals of that state. Two. A state party may also establish its jurisdiction over any such offense when a. The act is committed against a national of that state or b. The act is committed against a state or government facility of that state abroad, including an embassy or other diplomatic or consular premises, and any other property of that state or c. The act is committed by a stateless person who has his or her habitual residence in the territory of that state or d. The act is committed on board an aircraft which is operated by any carrier of that state and e. The act is committed against the security of the state party. 3. Upon ratifying or acceding to this convention, each state party shall notify the Secretary General of the Organization of African Unity of the jurisdiction it has established in accordance with paragraph 2 under its national law. Should any change take place, the state party concerned shall immediately notify the Secretary General. 
4. Each state party shall likewise take such measures as may be necessary to establish its jurisdiction over the acts set forth in Article 1 in cases where the alleged offender is present in its territory and it does not extradite that person to any of the state's parties which have established their jurisdiction in accordance with paragraphs 1 or 2. Article 7, 1. Upon receiving information that a person who has committed or who is alleged to have committed any terrorist act as defined in Article 1st of may be present in its territory, the state party concerned shall take such measures as may be necessary under its national law to investigate the facts contained in the information. 2. Upon being satisfied that the circumstances so warrant. The state party in whose territory the offender or alleged offender is present shall take the appropriate measures under its national law so as to ensure that person's presence for the purpose of prosecution. 3. Any person against whom the measures referred to in paragraph 2 are being taken shall be entitled to a. Communicate without delay with the nearest appropriate representative of the state of which that person is a national or which is otherwise entitled to protect that person's rights or, if that person is a state less person, the state in whose territory that person habitually resides. b. Be visited by a representative of that state. c. Be assisted by a lawyer of his or her choice. d. B. Informed of his or her rights under subparagraphs, A, B, and C. 4. The rights referred to in paragraph 3 shall be exercised in conformity with the national law of the state in whose territory the offender or alleged offender is present, subject to the provision that the said laws must enable full effect to be given to the purposes for which the rights accorded under paragraph 3 are intended. Part 4. Extradition, Article 8, 1. Subject to the provisions of paragraphs 2 and 3 of this article, the state's parties shall undertake to extradite any person charged with or convicted of any terrorist act carried out on the territory of another state party and whose extradition is requested by one of the state's parties in conformity with the rules and conditions provided for in this convention or under extradition agreements between the state's parties and within the limits of their national laws. 2. Any state party may, at the time of the deposit of its instrument of ratification or accession, transmit to the Secretary General of the OA the grounds on which extradition may not be granted and shall at the same time indicate the legal basis in its national legislation or international conventions to which it is a party which excludes such extradition. The Secretary General shall forward these grounds to the state's parties. 3. Extradition shall not be granted if final judgment has been passed by a competent authority of the requested state upon the person in respect of the terrorist act or acts for which extradition is requested. Extradition may also be refused if the competent authority of the requested state has decided either not to institute or terminate proceedings in respect of this same act or acts. 4. A state party in whose territory an alleged offender is present shall be obliged, whether or not the offence was committed in its territory, to submit the case without undue delay to its competent authorities for the purpose of prosecution if it does not extradite that person. Article 9 each state party undertakes to include as an extraditable offence any terrorist act as defined in Article 1 in any extradition treaty existing between any of the state's parties before or after the entry into force of this convention. Article 10, exchange of extradition requests between the state's parties to this convention shall be effected directly either through diplomatic channels or other appropriate organs in the concerned states. b. A statement describing the offences for which extradition is being requested indicating the date and place of its commission, the offence committed, any convictions made in a copy of the provisions of the applicable law and c. as comprehensive a description as possible of the wanted person together with any other information which may assist in establishing the person's identity and nationality. Article 12, in urgent cases, the competent authority of the state making the extradition may, in writing, Request that the state seized of the extradition request arrest the person in question provisionally. 
such provisional arrest shall be for a reasonable period in accordance with the national law of the requested state. Article 13, 1. Where a state party receives several extradition requests from different states parties in respect of the same suspect and for the same or different terrorist acts, it shall decide on these requests having regard to all the prevailing circumstances, particularly the possibility of subsequent extradition, the respective dates of receipt of the requests, and the degree of seriousness of the crime. 2. Upon agreeing to extradite, states' parties shall seize and transmit all funds and related materials purportedly used in the commission of the terrorist act to the requesting state as well as relevant incriminating evidence. 3. Such funds, incriminating evidence and related materials, upon confirmation of their use in the terrorist act by the requested state, shall be transmitted to the requesting state even if, for reasons of death or escape of the accused, the extradition in question cannot take place. 4. The provisions in paragraphs 1, 2 and 3 of this article shall not affect the rights of any of the state's parties or bona fide third parties regarding the materials or revenues mentioned above. Part 5. Extraterritorial Investigations, Commission Rogado Iyer, and Mutual Legal Assistance, Article 14, 1. Any state party may while recognizing the sovereign rights of states' parties in matters of criminal investigation, request any other state party to carry out, with its assistance and cooperation, on the latter's territory, criminal investigations related to any judicial proceedings concerning alleged terrorist acts and, in particular, a. the examination of witnesses and transcripts of statements made as evidence, b. the opening of judicial information, c the initiation of investigation processes, d. the collection of documents and recordings or, in their absence, authenticated copies thereof, e. conducting inspections and tracing of assets for evidentiary purposes, f. executing searches and seizures and, g. service of judicial documents. Article 15. A commission rogatoire may be refused. a where each of the state's parties has to execute a commission rogatoire relating to the same terrorist tax. b. If that request may affect efforts to expose crimes, impede investigations or the indictment of the accused in the country requesting the commission rogatoire or c. If the execution of the request would affect the sovereignty of the requested state, its security or public order. Article 16 the extraterritorial investigation, Commission Rogado Iyer, shall be executed in compliance with the provisions of national laws of the requested state. The request for an extraterritorial investigation, Commission Rogado Iyer, relating to a terrorist act shall not be rejected on the grounds of the principle of confidentiality of bank operations or financial institutions, where applicable. Article 17. The state's parties shall extend to each other the best possible mutual police and judicial assistance for any investigation, criminal prosecution or extradition proceedings relating to the terrorist acts as set forth in this convention. Article 18. The state's parties undertake to develop, if necessary, especially by concluding bilateral and multilateral agreements and arrangements mutual legal assistance procedures aimed at facilitating and speeding up investigations and collecting evidence, as well as cooperation between law enforcement agencies in order to detect and prevent terrorist acts. Part 6. Final Provisions, Article 19, 1. This convention shall be open to signature, ratification or accession by the member states of the Organization of African Unity. Two. The instruments of ratification or accession to the present convention shall be deposited with the Secretary General of the Organization of African Unity. 3. The Secretary General of the Organization of African Unity shall inform member states of the organization of the deposit of each instrument of ratification or accession. 4. No state party may enter a reservation which is incompatible with the object and purposes of this convention. 5. 
No state party may withdraw from this convention except on the basis of a written request addressed to the Secretary General of the Organization of African Unity. The withdrawal shall take effect six months after the date of receipt of the written request by the Secretary General of the Organization of African Unity. Article 20, 1. This convention shall enter into force 30 days after the deposit of the 15th instrument of ratification with the Secretary General of the Organization of African Unity. 2. For each of the states that shall ratify or accede to this convention shall enter into force 30 days after the date of the deposit by that state party of its instrument of ratification or accession. Article 21, 1. Special protocols or agreements may, if necessary, supplement the provisions of this convention. 2. This convention may be amended if a state party makes a writ to attend request to that effect to the Secretary General of the Organization of African Unity. The Assembly of Heads of State and Government may only consider the proposed amendment after all the state's parties have been duly informed of it at least three months in advance. 3. The amendment shall be approved by a simple majority of the state's parties. It shall come into force for each state which has accepted it in accordance with its constitutional procedures three months after the Secretary General has received notice of the acceptance. Article 22, 1. Nothing in this convention shall be interpreted as derogating from the general principles of international law in particular the principles of international humanitarian law, as well as the African Charter on Human and People's Rights. 2. Any dispute that may arise between the state's parties regarding the interpretation or application of this convention shall be amicably settled by direct agreement between them. Failing such settlement, any one of the state's parties may refer the dispute to the International Court of Justice in conformity with the statute of the court or by arbitration by other state's parties to this convention. Article 23, the original of this convention, of which the Arabic, English, French and Portuguese texts are equally authentic, shall be deposited with the Secretary General of the Organization of African Unity. Annex List of International Instruments A. Tokyo Convention on Offenses and Certain Other Acts Committed on Board Aircraft of 1963 B. Montreal Convention for the Suppression of Unlawful Acts Against the Safety of Civil Aviation of 1971 and the Protocol Thereto of 1984 C. New York Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of Crimes Against Internationally Protected Persons including diplomatic agents of 1973. d. International Convention Against the Taking of Hostages of 1979. e. Convention on the Physical Protection of Nuclear Material of 1979. f. United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea 1982. g. Protocol for the Suppression of Unlawful Acts of Violence at Airports Serving International Civil Aviation. Supplementary to the Convention for the Suppression of Unlawful Acts Against the Safety of Civil Aviation of 1988, H. Protocol for the Suppression of Unlawful Acts Against the Safety of Fixed Platforms Located on the Continental Shelf of 1988, I. Convention for the Suppression of Unlawful Acts Against Maritime Navigation of 1988, J. Convention on the Marking of Plastic Explosives of 1991, K. International Convention for the Suppression of Terrorist Explosive Bombs of 1997, L. Convention on the Prohibition of the Use, Stockpiling, Production and Transfer of Antia Personnel Mines and on Their Destruction of 1997.